We're here today with one of the oldest leveling devices known to man, the water level. Welcome to Hack a Week. Behind me here is the area that I need to get level to put up a 10 by 12 storage area for someone. And well, right now I've got it pretty well excavated out, but I need to get this all level. And all across that area in all directions, it needs to be exactly the same height. So how do you do that? You could stand out here for a long time with a regular carpenter's level. But the trick is, how do you know that way over on this corner and all the way over here on this corner, 12 feet away, you're going to be exactly the same height and perfectly level? Well, there's a way to do it, and it's called a water level. And a water level has been in use for a long, long time, all the way back. The Egyptians used them, the Romans used them. A lot of people have used them. As soon as someone figured out that water seeks its own level, and you come up with some kind of a tube, well, you can level just about anything over any distance as long as you've got enough water to fill the tube over that distance. So, come on over here, I'll show you the basic setup I've got and how it all works. Here I have a container, a one quart container, it's just a paint container. I drilled a small hole in the top so that it can vent. Down here I put a uh, eighth inch NPT by 5 16 hose barb. Drilled a hole in there with a unibit and just screwed it in with a little Teflon tape to help seal it up. Here I have a piece of furring strip painted white and I've got a plastic tube attached to that reservoir and the tube is 20 feet long and it's taped to this piece of furring strip. So what we're going to do is now we're going to fill up this container with some fluid that I've tinted with red and blue food coloring which makes a nice dark purple color. It shows up well in the tube. We're gonna fill that up until it's about here somewhere and then you'll see that it'll also show up here in the tube. So let's get the cap off from this. And we're just gonna pour this in. And it's gonna run out through the tube. You see it going out of the tube. And we're just gonna keep going. And the water is gonna seek its own level. You'll see it'll go a little too high. It'll go a little too low but it will eventually stabilize right at the exact same level as what's in the container. So we'll leave it right about there. Uh, maybe I'll take it up to the 20 ounce mark so I have something for reference. Because sometimes as you work out in the hot sun, this water is going to warm up a little bit and it will expand slightly. So throughout the day you may find you have to recalibrate your water level a bit as you work. Another important thing is to make sure all the air bubbles get out of the tube. So this is how I work the air bubbles back out. I just lift up the tube till it's all gone out of that and then just keep making a loop and let it run all the way back through. You see there's an air bubble. We're just going to slowly get rid of these. Okay, we're almost to the end of our 20 foot length. And there we go. So now we're just going to go in the opposite direction. We'll just work our way back. And all the air bubbles should be purged out of the system. And there we go. We're getting to the very end now and we're back on the stick. Let's put it up next to the container. I put my four stakes in the corners. There's one there, there's one over there, one there, one down here. The span from there to there is 12 feet. From there to there is 10 feet. How do I know if it's square? Easy. You just measure diagonally from that post over to this post and you write down the measurement. In this case it's 187 inches. Then you measure from that corner over to that corner and it measures 187 inches. That's how you know that you're square. Those two distances in an X across a square need to be equal for the square to be truly square. Okay, enough about squares. So there we are. There is the whole layout 
and uh, now we can take the water level and start checking out where things are at as far as the ground being level. This entire framework is going to set on bricks. It's not going to set right on the bare ground, it's going to be on bricks. So, in each corner, I'm going to place a brick. And for right now, that's the first brick. So what we're going to do is see just where that's at on the water level. This is going to be our zero point. This is where we're going to reference everything to, to make sure it's all the same height as this. Okay, let's start with the first brick. I've got this one laid down good and solid. I'm going to take my stick with the tube on it. I'm just going to let it stabilize. It'll take a few seconds before it stops bouncing up and down. Now what it's doing is it's seeking the same level as my bucket over there on the fence. Once it's stable, I'm going to take a pencil and put a little line right at the level where the water is in the tube. Now that's my zero point. Now what I can do is start moving around my excavation site and see just where the ground is at. I've got another brick here. We need that because that's what we have over there is a brick. So let's just place one right here randomly and see what we've got. Let's put the stick on it. I've brought you in a little closer here so you can see what's going on. You can see how the water level is bouncing up and down a little. Now it's stabilized. So the water level here says I'm about an inch below my zero point. But it's backwards. You have to think the other way around because what's happened here? What's happened is my stick has raised up from the zero point. Let me just show you something. I'm going to drop it down off the brick for a second. Now it's off the brick. The brick is about probably two inches thick. So see, now it's an inch above. I'm going to put it back on the brick. So you can see the water level is about one inch below my zero point. What that means is the stick has raised up higher than the zero point. The water has stayed at the same level. The mark has moved up. That means that that section of ground needs to be excavated down one inch. I need to take one inch that way off from the surface of the ground. Let's try another spot over on the other corner that way and see what it's at. Let's check this other corner now. We're totally opposite of the zero point corner. Let the water stabilize for a second. And this corner is what? It's about an inch and a half high. So I need to excavate down about an inch and a half. Here's a little advantage of using a brick when you're doing this stuff because I need to go down about an inch and a half, but I don't have to excavate all of the dirt. All I need to do is take about an inch and a half away from this area where the brick is. So this is really soft sand. I can just take a board and scrape away some of the sand right here. Other areas are a little harder. There's a few roots I'm going to have to deal with in this section. So let's check it out right there and see what we've got. Okay, let's put the stick on the brick see where the water ends up. Well, that's better. I only need to take off maybe a half inch of soil at the most. So I'm just going to go down here right now and scrape away a little bit more with the brick. Let's put it back in place and see what we have now. There we go. That is exactly at the same level as the brick on the other corner. Now a minute ago I lost some of the water out of this, so I had to go back over to my reservoir and top it up and recalibrate it, make sure it was back on the line. If you spill some of the water out of it, you're going to have to recalibrate. There you go, the humble water level. What a neat little tool. Pretty easy to make, versatile as hell, and you can have the hose up to you know whatever length you need. You could do a huge area if you wanted to. I once used this on a deck that I built for someone, a 500 square foot deck. And of course a deck or a porch needs a little bit of slope to it so the water can run off. Over a 20 foot span, I set up everything with some strings so that I had a quarter inch slope. When I got all done with the project, I still had a quarter inch slope. I rechecked it with the water level later. That's how accurate it really is. So if you ever need to do anything level wise like this, and it's over a huge area, 
just go ahead and make one of these. It'll take you a few minutes, like I said, about maybe $10, $15 at the hardware store. And you got a pretty nifty device that's as old as the hills, but works great. So thanks for watching. Thanks for the donations. And until next time. We're out here today with the, the Jets, right when I'm trying to do a scene. We're here today with one of the oldest known leveling devices known, known to somebody. We're here today with one of the oldest barking neighbor dogs that like to bark every time I talk. We're here today with one of the Fark shut up. We're here today. <laughs> I give up.